let's take a look at our flow working in a ring topology. Here is a simple backhaul network with four defined services, two residential best effort links, and two business services. One high priority 20 megabits per second, used for example for voice over IP and transactional data, and an 80 megabit per second best effort internet service. The logical paths shown are how the WISP actually sets up the service using the Mind Control web app. The physical paths the services take over the 100 megabits per second radio backhaul links are calculated by the Mind to provide optimal service quality. No path configuration is required by the WISP. In this case, the Mind ensures the high priority 20 megabits per second business service follows the path with the least utilization. The paths the service take is shown in Mind Control on the map interface in a way that's similar to what we see here. Let's now look at what happens under less than ideal conditions. Suddenly, adverse weather moves into the area, affecting the top right link. This results in a severe fade from 100 megabit per second to 10. Our flow reacts within seconds to maintain the best possible service, using all available links and bandwidth. In this case, the green 10 megabit per second best effort residential service can still be carried over the fading link, but there is no capacity for the 20 megabit per second high priority service for the business. Our flow determines that the only path to maintain the full 20 megabits per second for this service is to move the traffic to the lower path to the mind. The 80 megabits per second best effort business internet service and the pink 20 megabit per second residential broadband service have to be proportionally right sized to fit into the new available bandwidth, which is 80 megabits per second, since 20 megabit per second priority business service has taken 20 megabits per second from the 100 megabit per second total link capacity. This results in the 80 megabit per second business service shaped to 64 megabits per second and the 20 megabit service shaped to 16 megabits per second. An important point is that this shaping prevents packet loss in the backhaul, ensuring that there is no retransmissions and the additional congestion this causes. In addition, as the mind knows the exact usage of all the services at any time, if, for example, the now 60 megabit per second pink residential service is only using 10 megabits per second, the extra 6 megabit per second of capacity will be allocated to the original 80 megabit per second service, providing nearly the full capacity. When the fading link restores to at least 30 megabits per second, the original configuration will automatically be restored, resulting in full bandwidth to all sites as before. If our flow is not in this network, and another failover method such as OSPF or spanning tree was in place, there would be severe packet loss on the fading link, affecting both the priority service and the 10 megabit per second green residential service, while the best effort business service and pink 20 megabit per second residential service, the less important ones, would continue to work without understanding that such a fade had taken place. Only if there was a complete link failure would traffic be rerouted using these more basic failover schemes. Switch over time may take a few seconds, and the end result would be 130 megabit per second competing for 100 megabit per second of link capacity, again affecting services and degrading network efficiency with significant packet loss.